Another component I would like to show you is the query filter component. Let's add one to our dashboard. If we click the data icon, we can see it can be linked with queries. And let's take, for example, this node query and link it to the filter component. After having done this, we see an overview of all our columns in our uh, query. And for each column, we have a filter UI below it. We can filter it down to specific uh, columns of our interest. So let's filter it to uh, the name and the version, software version column. And what we also can do is we can add extra queries to it, link extra queries uh, by clicking the plus icon. And also for those extra queries, we can uh, apply a filter so we have specific filter icons um, based on both queries so over here i have configured a filter with name software version for our nodes and then the tx capacity used uh, and rx capacity used for our edges query um, up to now you cannot do anything with it so if you click some of the filters nothing will happen and that's just because our node edge is not linked to it so how does the linking work same way as always with feeds so in our feeds list uh, we see that the query filter appears over here and that query filter exposes queries and the queries is of course something that the node edge can be linked to so if we do that because we have linked new queries to the node edge, we need to redo some of the configuration. So if you go to settings, you see again two unassigned queries, one uh, of the filtered, uh, as I mark here, the filtered uh, indication, the filtered elements, and also uh, the filtered connections. So if we take those as node and edge again, configure it, the same way as we have done before let's quickly make a nice shape over here and let's take dotted lines for example uh, so now we have our filter ui linked with um, the the node edge so if we start typing over here now um, yeah let's take the m um, we can we can filter uh, on it so if we press enter we filter the nodes so the, the first um, the name column here comes from the node query so we are filtering the nodes over here um, so we're filtering all the nodes within their name uh, the letter m so we have matt over here and rom over here um, we can clear it again uh, and also you can see over here the three types of, of filters. Eh? So we have a uh, free text search which, give, which gives you suggestions. So if I start typing uh, the data, the distinct values are being shown uh, which mat match with the, the, the text you have typed uh, up to now. Um, the second uh, visualization of filter is, is the checkboxes. So here we have two software versions in all our nodes. Uh, the first, for the first one we have 20 results, for the second one we have one. So if we click the second one we should end up with one node and this is indeed what happens. Uh, also remark that if we start filtering, making selections over here, um, some options will disappear as they would only result in, in one uh, distinct value. So as there is only one uh, matching item over here, the other uh, columns are hidden because yeah, it doesn't make sense to filter on them. Uh, they only have one value, of course. So if we clear it again, we get our name field available. Um, for our second query, we have the third type of filter, and that's a numeric range filter. So uh, let's try to use that. Um, so we have a lot of connections over here, but if we filter them down uh, on certain value, we should see that uh, yeah, we only have a limited number of um, 
connections left here. So there is only one here matching this uh, specific value range. Up to now, we have linked our query filter with our node edge via the queries feed. So basically what happens is that our query filter uh, creates a new query. So it takes the original query and appends at the end uh, a filter node to it. Uh, and that's a filtered query. So that updated query, the query with the, the extra filter node at the end is then uh, sent to the node edge, which gets, uh, of course, then a filtered set of nodes and a filtered set of connections. There's also another way to link our query filter with the node edge, and that is via the query columns. Uh, for that, I have uh, reconfigured my node edge with the original queries directly linked to it, like you see over here. Uh, and then I will use my query columns as a filter on top of it. Okay. Uh, so basically what happens now is if we start filtering, so let's type a filter over here and apply it, we see that um, the original query is still used by the node edge, but uh, it interprets uh, the column configuration from the node edge, from the query filter, sorry, uh, and uses that to uh, filter out or highlight some nodes that apply to the filter. So there is no new query, nothing goes back to the server, no, uh, the full interpretation of um, what has selected in the query filter is done by the node edge component uh, itself. So it's much faster, it's, the interaction is, is much faster, uh, but you don't, um, we don't remove nodes or you don't get uh, an updated list of nodes or edges. So we can do that for all the feeds, fields, uh, of course. So if we clear that name uh, filter over here, uh, we can yeah, filter on software version as well. Um, let's zoom out a bit to see which one is matching, the one over here. Um, and also for um, the connections, we can do the same. So if we filter out the connections uh, that match with a certain value for the x. Um, and let's make it a bit bigger so we have more results. Um, we see that uh, also the highlighting appears on the edges. Okay, so if we change the filter, um, it updates the highlighting in the edges as well. Uh, next to the filtering, we can also configure uh, the coloring, the analytical coloring uh, in our query filter now. So that's very handy because you can do that uh, without being in edit mode. So now I'm not in edit mode, you can see, and I can click the color icon over here. And what happens next is that I can start defining some colors. So uh, for our so software version, for example, I can define a color by clicking on the color icon over here and color my uh, notes with a certain software version uh, with a uh, certain color. I can do that for each and every value, uh, of course. And the same goes for the connections. So um, I can select a range, for example, uh, click the color icon and color it this and have a second range with a different color. Select it and take, for example, something like that. Um, I can specify values outside my range as well. Uh, and then if I zoom in a bit, we can see that the colors are being applied uh, to um, to the nodes and to the edges in the same way as uh, we can configure this uh, in edit mode as well. So in the query column section, there was there was a UI to, f to uh, configure the different colors. Uh, and everything is linked again with the same uh, analytical coloring. So we need to have the analytical coloring enabled on both your nodes and on your edges. Uh, like you see over here. And once you have done that, the colors from uh, the filter UI are being pushed to the, uh, to the node edge and being used over there. Uh, 
after having configured some colors, you can of course still uh, use um, the, the highlight filter. So that still works uh, on top of the, the filter uh, on the coloring configuration from your query filter.